personal finance practice problem using Excel, adjustable rate mortgage or arm rate increase. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to the Excel worksheet, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. But if you do have access, there's three tabs down below. An example tab, a practice tab, and a blank tab. The example tab, in essence, being an answer key. Let's take a look at it now. Information on the left, we're going to use that to build our, our tables on the right. Our scenario being that we have an adjustable rate mortgage, one in which the rate can change over time. And we're going to start out thinking that as of this point in time what would happen if the rate then increased from the 6.5 to the 8 percent we'll think about the increase in the payments which would be the first thing that we would, would most likely be concerned about to see if the cash flow is there and then we might want to build we would build in our amortization tables and we can get more complex scenarios such as what will be the interest and the loan principle and the equity that would be involved and then we'll think about it uh, from a different perspective looking at the loan, the original loan being a 30 year loan adjustable rate, which was then adjusted. Meaning if you were taking on an adjustable rate loan from the start, you might then have more complex scenarios in the future that you would have to be running to say, what would happen if the rate was to increase, you know, five years from now or one year from now, and try to think about best case and worst case scenarios, given the risk factors are going up. That's the pros and cons of going from a fixed rate to an adjustable rate you're typically looking for better terms in terms of the rate up front but you've got your more exposure towards risk which you'd have to approximate in some way in your decision making process the second tab is going to have the blank information on the right in blue so you don't have to work on reformatting the whole tables if you don't want to and then the blank tab we're going to reformat the full tables basically working from scratch now if you don't have this information you could build it pretty quickly just put this data on the left hand side you could basically take the whole sheet i would select the whole sheet format it first for your underlying formatting you don't need to do this if you have the sheet which i usually make currency brackets and then remove the decimals and no dollar sign and then i'm not and then you'll adjust it as needed for example formatting these as percentages and adding decimals as needed okay so first we're going to say we got the loan amount at this point in time is at the 131466 the years are 20 and then we have the adjustable rate at the 6.5 which is going to we're going to say what if it increases to eight percent what would be the impact on the payments in that case so that's the first thing we'll think about the original the original payment or og amount as they might call it in a more slangy current cool term would be negative pmt or payment calculation this is the and i start it with a negative instead of an equal because i think that's the fastest way to type it uh, although it's probably more proper to have the negative inside here but i'm going to put negative pmt we're going to start off with the rate was the 6.5 percent at the rate that's a yearly rate so we're going to divide it by 12 to get the monthly rate remember all the time whenever you hear the rate it's always a yearly rate because that's how we talk about rates because if you talked about them in days or months they would be small and not very easy to communicate so comma the number of periods we're going to say is 20 that's in years though and we want it in months so i'm going to take the 20 times 12 20 times 12 and then comma and the present value is at the 131466 now we're considering that's the loan balance we're considering like at this point in time uh when the rate basically would change is our general idea here so we're going to say and we'll we'll expand on that uh later on in the problem so that's going to be the 980 and then the rate goes up to eight percent so now the new payment new payment amount is going to be let's do the same thing with the eight percent negative pmt we might be able to copy this first one down if we wanted to like adjust the 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 absolute ties and mixed references but we want to recalculate it to so negative pmt brackets the rate now is the eight percent that's a yearly rate so we're going to divide it by 12 to get the monthly rate comma and the number of periods is still at the 20 and so we're going to say that's years so i got to divide that by 12 to get to the months and then comma present value is still at this one three one four six six we're we're at the same point in time with these different rates in essence and something went horribly horribly wrong because that that doesn't that doesn't make sense let's do it again negative pmt brackets rate is this one 
divided by 12, comma, number of periods is 20, times 12, comma, and then the present value, the 131466, and enter. That looks more reasonable. Okay, so then the difference, the increase, I'm gonna take the bottom one minus the top one because I'm gonna say it's an increase in the payment. So I'm gonna take the 1100 minus the 980. So there's a 9119 increase. There could be pennies involved here because I don't have the decimals currently. I'm looking for the underline font and underline. If I wanted to add pennies to this, I could do so, but I'm not. I'm gonna take them back out. And this is a rounded number that we're working with here. Okay, so now we could think about this from a more complex scenario because you might think, you know, that's the first thing that you would think about. Can I afford that difference or change? But you also might want to think about, well, what's going to have the impact on the interest for my taxes, for example, and what's going to be the impact on my equity kind of calculations if I plan on selling the home at some point in time. So to do that, we might want the amortization table. We might want to break this out by year. Again, you can do this online with online tools but it's not as tied into your worksheet. So you can't really run as much scenarios as easily and run different scenarios with more complex worksheets because everything won't be connected in that case. So you, I would use this to kind of double check the work oftentimes and then try to reconstruct it in our table here. So I'm gonna start off with the OG loan. I'll call it the OG loan. So I'm gonna take the skinny C and I'm gonna make another skinny F out of it. That's the same size, home tab. Uh, clipboard, paintbrush it, skinny F. And then let's make our headers. I'm gonna call this the OG loan. And I'll make that red just to give it, that's my title of this of this thing. The OG loan, let's make it red and white. And then this is gonna be the year, month, payment, as we've seen in prior presentations. So I'm gonna a little bit in faster here. Interest, loan balance, loan balance. Notice I'm not wrapping the text, I'm using two cells so that I don't make us a, a, a wide one a wide one I don't want the one too wide loan balance and then I'm gonna select these and that one and let's make that black and white let's make it black and white and let's center it there's our header so I'm gonna make these two a little bit more skinny a little more skinnier skinnerize them I'm gonna skinnerize it that's what, I, that's what I call my diet. I skinnerize myself. I'm doing some skinnerizing. And then I'm going to say this is going to be months, uh, one, 20 times 12. 20 times 12. Number of months we need is 240. So one, two. Uh, let's do a zero, one, two. And then I'll buckle my shoe real quick. And now I'm back. Now I'm going to copy it down. I'm going to select those three. I'm going to copy that down to 240. One, two, buckle your shoe and then fill handle it down to 240, which make sure your shoes buckle because when you auto drive this thing all the way down, you don't want to trip. So then we're going to go to the home tab. We're going to go to the alignment and center it. So there we go. And then this is going to be zero. And then we'll do our, our, our roundup formula to get the years here equals roundup. This is useful for the pivot table and the data that we'll do soon. So round up brackets round up little doggies on the range those and so we're going to say round up that number divided by 12 but then i'm going to round it up with a comma and then the number of digits is going to be at point one which means what to the whole number to the foot to the whole number don't give me don't give me these partial point numbers fraction things that's not what i'm looking for and then i double click on the fill handle button and then scroll down and it looks like it's doing what it has been designed to do and then we'll center it. it's just amazing this whole thing is just amazing home tab alignment and center and then i'll put some zeros here up top and then the loan balance is going to be equal to the 131466 enter the payment is going to be equal to the og payment the o to the g payment which was right there, the 980. I'm gonna F4 that one, absolutizing it. We only need a mixed reference, but absolute works. Dollar sign before the E and the one. So when I copy it down, it doesn't move that cell down because it's outside of my table information here. It's in the data set, therefore it needs to be absolutized. That means absolute referencing it. This one is gonna be equal to the loan balance. 
times the interest rate, which is the OG rate, the original low rate that I wish we can hold on to. That needs to be absolutized because it's outside of my table in my data set. So I'm going to F for it. Dollar sign before the B and six. You only need a mixed reference, but the absolute one is easy. Divide it by 12 because that would be the interest for a year. And we need the month interest and enter. Now we're going to have the loan decrease, which you might call the principal decrease if you were so inclined and who's to stop you to be inclined thusly. And then we're in the loan balance, which is going to be equal to the lot prior loan balance minus the decrease. And those are both um, in, in our area here, not in the data set. So we don't need to absolutize any of that. No absolute references needed or mixed references or any kind of strange references to to obscure things. I'm going to double click on that and then it'll copy it down. Double click it on the fill button and it should be zero at the bottom, zero at the bottom. There's, there's what it would be in the O to the G loan payment from that point in time for 20 years. Let's make that blue and then blue and borderized it. I painted it blue and then I put some borders around it because it's so nice looking that people probably want to break into it. So then I needed to put the borders up. So then I'm going to, I'm going to make this a skinny and let's break this out on a year by year breakout. Now we'll do that a couple different formats and then we'll do the same thing for the new loan term. So I'm going to make, I'm going to copy this skinny column F and I'm going to put my cursor on the format painter and skinny up M F to the M FM, just like the radio station. And then we're going to say, I'm going to copy the same headers over here from the OG to the loan balance, copy that and put that right here in the end. But then I'm going to get rid of the months because I don't want months. We're talking years over here's years over here's right click and delete the months. And then the years, how many years over here's do we want? We want one, two, buckle my shoe. And once my shoes on tightly, so it doesn't slip and I don't roll an ankle, I'm going to grab that fill handle and I'm going to drive it. The auto drives it all the way down to 20. 20 years. That's what I'm talking about. And then we're going to go to the home tab alignment and center. And so now we're going to do our payments. So we're going to sum up. I want to sum up these payments, everything in the ones in the one area right there. It should add up to the 11, 7, 62, 11, 7, 62. We're going to use a sum if a fancy formula, sum if fancy formula range in it so we want to pick up this range i'm going to pick up the whole thing in column g i'm just going to say take the whole g column g to g g g i knew a g g before and then criteria is going to be this one right there and then comma and the sum range sum range is going to be here so we're saying everything that has a one in this criteria range over here. I want you to sum up the related number in the payment range. Boom, does it. And then it just sums that up. It's just incredible, incredible. Let's do it for the interest equals the sum if range is gonna be the same range right there. Uh, GG again, comma, and then the criteria, the number one again, comma, and then the sum range. Now this is different interest. That's what we want. That's what we want. This one will change from year to year. It's going to have a differential from years one to years two. Loan decrease. Let's do this one equals the sum if I want you to sum it, but I got these conditions. This range right here, you want to look at that range, GG range. And then I want you to take this criteria and find it in that range and then sum comma the related sum range field, which is, which is, this is the loan decrease. That's what I want you to do. So there it is. Now I'm going to do it one more time so that I can copy it. Don't delete. Oh, got to do it again, but we're going to copy it across this time. I'm going to double click on this one, this GG. I don't want the GG to move to the right. So I'm going to say, let's just F for that one. So it doesn't move. This one needs to be a mixed reference because I want it. I want this number here not to move to the right. So I need a dollar sign before the end, but not the three because I want it to move down. Trickiness. The I, I uh, is one that we want to move to I to J to K. So we're going to say, OK, leave that as is. Copy it across with the fill, auto filling it. We should get the same 
thing. And then I'm gonna double click on the fill handle button and it copies it down just, just miraculously. It's like magic. It's like magic happened. Magic just happened right in front of my face. And so then we're gonna say this is gonna be equal to, this one's a little different. I wanna take the minimum. So it equals the min ifs brackets. And then the min range is gonna be this range, G. And then comma. And then, actually, sorry, I got that big, I got that mixed up. The min range is the cre is this range, the loan balance range, and then comma, and then the criteria range, that's the GG, that's where GG lives. GG is over there. And then we've got this last one, I'm trying to pull this one over so you can see it. And then the criteria is the one. So there's the one, and so that takes the lowest number with a one next to it, there's the 128, 152. Let's fill handle button it. Let's just double click on that fill handle button. Let's total it up down below. Total, totally totaled. Let's totally total it. Do you want to total it? Totally. I totally do. We're going to copy that across now, totaling it that way. Total, total. All right, then we're gonna go up top and make that blue and bordered. I'm gonna do it also the same thing with a pivot table, which we've seen in the past. So I'll do it a little bit more quickly here. I can't copy the headers because there's two lines. So I'm just gonna use this header column. I'm gonna go all the way down and I'm just gonna do the pivot table thing, same thing to it. Pivot tab, insert, pivot tab. And we're gonna put that right there. That's where I want it. That's where I want it. Okay, hold on a sec, that's the wrong table undo that that's not a pivot table where's where did my undo things go what happened okay i fixed it let's insert the right table this time pivot table that's what we're looking at pivot table existing concentrate con focus focus like a beam of laser and then i'm going to take the years over here i'm going to pull that to the left so there's our years. So now it's pulling over this data. And now I'm just going to take not the months, but the payment, the interest, the data, and the balance. And so there it is. Makes a nice table for us. Just automatically. And then let's format this thing. I'm going to hit the drop downs and say value formatting, number formatting. I want to make it currency, brackets, dollar sign, gone, decimal, down, down, and OK. OK, let's do it again. I missed that. You did that way too fast. Let's do it again value field settings on the next one we're going to say number formatting currency brackets dollar sign gone decimal down down okay okay that's still way too fast do it again okay let's do it again on the third one we're going to go number formatting currency brackets dollar sign gone decimal down down okay okay i'll do it one more time slightly different though this one's different because i don't want the sum I want the min, the min, the min, min. The next part is the same. Currency, brackets, dollar sign gone, decimal down, down. Okay, okay, yay, yay. Okay, so now let's, I'm gonna select these columns. I'm gonna make them, I'm gonna skinnerize them. Just like when I go on a diet and skinnerize myself. I'm just gonna skinnerize myself a little bit right there. Trim that, trim off some skinner, skinnerizing. Okay, so then we're going to we're going to do the same thing for the new rate one. So we can do a side by side. One thing's on one side, the other thing's on the other side. I call that a side by side. So I'm going to say that we're going to I'm going to hide from from F. Well, let's first copy the header. I'm going to copy this header from the OG. Let's copy that header here and I'm going to put that over here. I'm going to copy that header right there. And this isn't the OG, this is going to be the rate change one, rate change. Okay, so now I'm going to hide. Now I'm going to hide over here. Let's actually take the skinny. Well, let's go from the skinny, from, from H on over to right here, H to R, her, her. Right click and hide that stuff. And then I'm going to make a skinny out of the S. I'm going to put my cursor on the C column, home tab, clipboard. Format, paint it, and skinny, skinnerize the S. Automatic skinnerize. And then we'll do our months again. This one, how long is this one? 20 years, 200, 
240, 240. So we're gonna say one, let's say zero, one, two, buckle your shoe because you don't wanna roll an ankle. We're driving a long way here. We're gonna take the fill handle. We're gonna drive this on down 240, driving it down with the, with the auto fill. We're in our auto and we're driving it down with our shoelace tied or buckled, however your shoes work, to 240. So there it is, the 240. Does anyone have buckles on their shoe? That would be like a boot. Buck, buckle your boot. It sounds even better. Buckle your shoe. Buckle your boot. Boots have buckles, don't they? More than shoes? I don't know. Anyway, zero. We're going to say years are going to be round up equals round up. Round up brackets. This thing divided by 12, comma, digits, point 0.1. Boom. And I'm going to double click on the fill button handle thing. And that'll just sum it down. Sum it on down. Sum it on down. And then round this. And then I'm going to center this one. So then I'm going to put some zeros up top. We're going to say the loan balance this time is once again the 131,466. But the payment now under the new thing is rising up to 1100. I'm going to F4 that, making it absolute. Going to take my interest calculation, then is the 131,466 times the rate, which is now 8% at the increase rate. I need to make that absolute because it's outside in my data set, not in the table I'm working on. So I'm going to say F4, making an absolute. You only need a mixed reference, but an absolute is easy. And then we're going to take that and divide it by 12 because that would be per year and we need it per month. The loan decrease is going to be the payment minus the interest. Neither of them need to be absolute or mixed or anything because they're inside the table we're working on. The loan balance is going to be equal to the prior balance minus the 223. Neither of them need to be absolute or mixed because they're not coming from the data set, but inside the table we're working on. We're going to select these four. We're going to double click the fill button, the fill handle button all the way down. Check that it goes down to zero. It does. Let's go ahead and format these blue blue and blue and border them let's make them blue and once they're nice and blue and look good we got to put borders around it or people will come steal our stuff because it looks so good so there we go blue and bordered so then we're going to do the same thing on our year by year breakout let's do a year by year breakout i'm going to copy these headers and put them over here and then i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to skinnerize Go from S, home tab, clipboard, paintbrush it, skinnerize Z, making it skinnerized. And then I'm gonna get rid of the months because I don't need the months. I'm gonna do this a little bit more quickly this time. Mas rapido. And then I'm gonna say this is one, two, buckle my shoe, and then drive it down with the auto fill to 20. Not too far, 20. We're not going that far. I can go, th I can go there with unbuckled my shoelaces. I can go that far without even my shoes tied. I didn't even need to buckle my shoe to go that far. But then we're going to say this equals the sum if brackets and the range is going to be the range is going to be this range. I'm going to make that absolute selecting F4 on the keyboard criteria then comma is going to be that one and then comma and then the sum range. Notice that this criteria, by the way, needs to be a mixed reference because I don't want the AA to move. So I'm going to say dollar sign before the letters, but not the numbers. And then the sum range is the payments. The VV doesn't need any, any uh, absolutizing because I want it to move to the right as we go. So enter. So, so wait a sec. Something went horribly wrong. Something went horribly wrong. Just do it again. Just do it again. You messed it up. Sum if brackets range is going to be not you. That's the problem. It should be the range of T. That's your problem. You know what your problem is? Oh, uh, okay. I got lots of them. Criteria. We're going to go to the criteria. That's going to be the zero. That's where we need a dollar sign before that one. And then comma, the sum range is going to be the payments. Okay. Try it this time. Does it work? Check it. Double check it. Make sure that you didn't mess it up again. 13169. See? I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking about. 
I'm gonna copy that to the right and then double click the fill handle down on it. And so then there it is, there it is. So then let's do the slightly different one of the loan balance equals the uh, min if s ifs brackets the min range we want this one why why because that's where it happened to lit that's where the range is that's just it's just the way it is that's why 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 that's criteria is going to be this range t not u t and then the criteria is going to be the one boom and then it picks up this one down here check it make sure you didn't mess it up you messed up last time. I know. I know I messed it up, okay? But that was a one-time thing because I'm always right. I'm going to sum up the totals here equals the sum of these. We're going to sum these up. And then we'll copy this one to the right. Not all the way to the right, but right there. And then let's make this blue and bordered. Blue and bordered. We'll do the same thing with a pivot table. Let's make a pivot table doing the same thing just to show you the different methods you could do this. I can't take the top. I'm just going to take these as the header, the header portion. Copy that down to 20. Copy it down to the 20 years. 20 years have passed. And it's been an interesting. How did that happen? I wondered. Pivot table pivot table and then we're going to say existing worksheet we're going to put that right here and okay okay put the years down i'm going to copy that to the left and then i don't need the month payments interest decreased balance then i'm going to format these so they're not ugly or at least less ugly could you make them a little less ugly i'm going to say okay it's not my forte making things less ugly but I'll try. Let's do that. And so that's better. That's better. And then I'm going to format this one. I can we're going to make it currency brackets, get rid of the dollar sign, decimal down down. And then okay, okay. Two okay's. One more time. We're going to go number format, currency brackets, dollar sign, decimal down down. Okay, okay, last one's a little bit different. Un poco distinte or something. Wait, now you got distracted because you don't know what you're talking about. This is going to be a min, a min number formatting and then currency brackets, dollar sign gone, decimal down, down. Okay, okay. And then I'm going to make this a little bit skinner. I'm going to skinnerize it a bit, do a little skinnerizing like that looks good okay so that's another way we can do it this one's too skinny too skinny it's too skinny that's not healthy it's not healthy okay so there we go okay so now lastly let's think let's think about this a little bit more complexly let's say that the beginning of the loan let's make a, another skinny column i'm going to go from z here and i'm going to put that over here and make that skinny. Let's say that the the loan actually started at a 30 year loan, which was 155074 and the years years were 30 years and the rate the rate was the same rate of that uh, 6.5, 6.5 our starting rate or 0 0.065. And I'm going to make that a decimal add some brackets to or some so let's think about that because we're, now we're going to kind of back into this 20 year loan. So notice here, we kind of, we kind of cheated here. We kind of started as if we're at this point in time, that's the loan balance. What would be the difference in the payments? But clearly if there's, if you're starting at this point in time, the 6.5, you might have like a 30 year loan or something like that. And then you got to make projections into the future. What if the rate changed 20 years from now to 8% or something like that? What would be the total play out of that? And clearly, if you were planning on selling the home or something like that, then you might have different scenarios in terms of what would the equity be at that point in time and so on with different kind of scenarios. So let's I'll try to kind of back into that by by using this scenario. So we're going to say we started off with a 30 year loan at the loan of a 155.74. Uh, and then after 20 years, we're going to assume that that's when the rate then is going to is going to basically 
uh, increase, right? So I'm gonna say, okay, let's let's imagine that scenario. So let's run it. We're gonna say, okay, then the payment payment would be equal to, I'm gonna calculate the payment, which is going to be the PMT. Let's make it negative PMT. Negative PMT payment under these conditions would be the rate, the 6.5%, that's yearly. So I'm gonna divide it by 12 and then comma. Number of periods is gonna be 30, 30 years this time, that's in months. So I gotta multiply it times 12 and then comma. And then the present value, the 155.74, there's the 980. That's the same 980 that we talked about in the original, the original scenario at that 20 years. So we're gonna say we started it for a 30 year loan and let's run that amortization table just to, just to kind of back into this, get a fuller picture. So I'm gonna make this a skinny. I'm gonna take this skinny. I'm gonna put that skinny over here. I'm gonna make this blue. Let's make this blue and bordered. And then we're gonna go over here and say our headers. So let's go pick up our headers so I don't have to type them in again. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy my headers up top. Same kind of thing. Lo mismo, siempre, lo mi Okay, so this is the OG 30 year. So this is the OG OG, this, the real OG. And then the months are gonna be 30 years. That's 360, zero, one, two. Buckle your shoes. You need some tight shoes for this one because we're driving this thing down 360. We're gonna take that fill handle, drive it all the way down 360. You wanna be, make sure you, you, you know, got your shoes tight on that one. And so we're gonna go down 360, 360, full 360 rotation. We're gonna center it and then the years are gonna be equal to, we're gonna do a round up. Round up the little doggies brackets. We're gonna take up on K4 divided by 12 and then comma. And we wanna take that to the full digit, which is 0.1. And so that rounds it to one, copy that down, put in more cursor on the fill button, zero up top. And then I'm just going to center this whole thing. I'm just going to check that it goes down to 30 years. It does. Of course it does. What? You think I messed it up or something? I know what I'm talking about. I'm going to make this go skinny. And then we're going to put some zeros here. We'll say the balance is at the 155.74. Payment is going to be equal to that 980F4, making it absolute dollar sign before the letters and numbers. You only need a mixed reference, but an absolute will do. Interest, the prior balance times the rate, 6.5. Gonna make that absolute because I wanna copy it down and that's in our data table, so I don't want it to move. Dollar sign before the, the number and the letter, comma, uh, not a comma, then divide it by 12 because that was a year we want months. And so we'll subtract this out, the 980 minus the 840. Then I'll subtract out this this is the loan balance minus the loan reduction of the 140 selecting those four if i did it right i should just be able to double click the fill button handle thing and that should then create zero at the bottom if everything was constructed the way that i imagined it to be my imagination has been has come to life that's just exactly how i imagined it to be and then i made it then i like then i like constructed the thing in my head that on on the table so i'm going to make this i'm going to go up top and make this blue and bordered blue and border it so there we have it and you can see then if i go down and say okay after 10 years after 10 years this is the point that i was trying to get to after 10 years down here's after 10 years down here's we've got that's where we kind of made that change, the 131,466. That's the loan balance at our starting point here, where we said the 131,466. I kind of constructed it to be that. So you can, you, so we, we thought about it as this point in time, but you can think about it as if, you know, you're going back from a 30 year loan, and then where would you be if the, the rate changed? And if you're starting from the beginning, then you got to take into consideration the risk somehow and run like a worst case scenario and a best case scenario and that kind of stuff uh, to, to, to compensate for the added risk that would be taken into consideration, which gets complex, but that's kind of the idea. Let's make this into our, our, our table thing again. I'm going to make take this skinny and make a year by year breakout. 
and I'm going to copy these headers, copy those headers, put that right here. Let's get rid of the months because I don't need those months. We're not talking months now. We're not talking months. We're going to say one, two, and then I'm not even going to buckle my shoe. Don't even buckle your shoe because I can do this with my, I, I do this barefoot. I'm not even putting shoes on. So you can just, you know, my feet are tough enough to go down to 30 without the shoes buckled. So I'm going to say this is going to be equal to the sum if, sum if brackets, the range is going to be not the month range over there. Don't do that again. That's where I messed up last time. Comma, and let's make that absolute F4 on the keyboard. And then comma criteria is this one that needs to be mixed because I want it to move down, but not to the right. So do, hold on a second. So I'm gonna put a dollar sign before the A, dollar sign, and then comma criteria sum range is gonna be the payments. Do that, that's what I want you to do thing. Check it, make sure it's not messed up. 11, seven, that looks good. Let's copy it to the right. And then I'll check this one, check that one. Make sure it's not messed up. Make sure it's not messed up. And that's gonna be 10, 29, okay, that's good. And then I'm gonna copy these down, double clicking, copy it down. Looks good. Mui bien, mui bien, this one's a little different. We're gonna take the min, min ifs, brackets. Range, we want the range, the min range, this one, comma, and then the criteria range, AJ, AJ, comma, criteria is the one. Copy it down, double clicking. Let's put a total down below. Do you want a total column? I totally do. I totally want a total column. We'll sum that up. Why even ask that? Totally. And now we'll copy it across. I'm gonna put my cursor right there, copy it across with the fill handle, pull in the fill to the handle to the right. Let's make this blue and bordered. Border blue, border blue. I'm gonna select this and say there's the border, there's the blue, border blue. Now after the 10 years, that's where we're at at the 10 years, that was, that's when we said that we ran the scenario from, you'll recall. So right there, the 131, 466, that's when we ran this scenario after that 20 year time period as of that point in time. But you can also think of it all the way back out, you know, in a, in a 30 year loan, just for example's sake. Let's round it out with a pivot table. This thing needs to be rounded out because there's an edge. Get out the sandpaper and round this thing out. Here we go, we'll sand this thing off. So I'm gonna take this thing, we'll do the pivot table thing. I'm going to take this all the way down for the 30 years. It's kind of a long one because this is the big guy. This is the 360 time period all the way around 360, 360 degrees and periods and months. So we'll take that and I'm going to go to the insert and then put in the pivot table. Put in the pivot, please. Put in the pivot, please. Put in that right. Hold on a second. That's not how you do it. You messed it up. Do it again. I'm going to insert pivot table and then I got to say I want it in the existing worksheet. That's the key point. Then I put it there and OK. Now let's clean it up so we can sand it off and round it out. We're going to say year, pulling that to the left and not the months, but the payments, the interest, the decrease, the balance, and then make it look better. We're going to hit the drop down, value field setting, number format, currency, Brackets, dollar sign gone, decimal down, down, okay, okay. Next one, do it again, value field setting, number format, currency, brackets, dollar sign gone, decimal down, down, okay, okay. Again, value field settings, number formatting, currency, brackets, dollar sign gone, decimal down, down. One more time, slightly different though, last one, value field, this time not the sum, but the min. Then the same part, number formatting, currency, brackets, dollar sign gone, decimal down, down, and okay, okay, okay. Ugh. And then I'll skinnerize these. Skinnerize these, just I wish I could skinnerize my belly like that. Ease that easily, you just click the fill handle and then trim it down like that. Uh, what are you talking, what, just, okay, so there's the 10. Now notice here, now you got the side-by-side -side scenarios here if you format it this way, right? So if I had this different side-by-side, -side, I could 
hide some cells, for example, to give the side by side. So in this format, I gave the amortization. We've got then the year by year breakout over here. So I might wanna see this year by year, you know, side by side with, with, the, next, with the next year by year. So here's the rate. Let's unhide some cells to do that. Do I need to unhide some cells? Right click, unhide. And so now I've got, so I'm gonna go back to the beginning and just make sure everything is unhidden. I'm gonna unhide everything. And so now I have the OG amortization table and then I put the year by year right next to it. And then I had the rate change amortization table and then the year by year right next to it. So you might want to then see the year by year to, in order to kind of analyze the difference between the two in a bit more complex than just looking at the payment. So I might then hide, say the amortization table, I might hide from here to here. And so I'm gonna right click and hide that. And then I can say, here's my OG from year to year for the 20 years. And then I'm gonna hide this amortization table and then hide that. And so you could see how you could put these two right next to each other for the year by year breakout to give us some more nuance in terms of the total payments for the year, the interest for the year, the loan decreases. And those are the things that you can use to help in, like think about where your equity will be possibly after a certain range of time and what will be the impact on the interest, which would, could have a tax implication, which is less easy to do if you did this in like, like a uh, online or something like this with a calculator. You can do these calculations, but you can't really run the side-by-side -side scenarios as easily. And then once you have the side-by-side -side scenarios, you can make a difference column if you wanted to and look at the differences. And then you can basically run different scenarios in terms of the rates, for example, the changing of the rates. So those types of things are much, much more flexibility if you're able to construct these things in an Excel worksheet to, to run those different scenarios, give you some more complexity uh, and it's some more nuance in it using the online tools possibly as a double check rather than the thing that you're completely dependent on and then run your worksheets in here for your scenarios. So I'm going to unhide this stuff and that's where we stand right now whether the shoes buckled, tied or barefoot, we're standing that's where we that's where we stand.